Hello guys, this is the first video of my four tutorials. In this first video I'll show you how to set up Java, Eclipse and Forge. If you've already set up Eclipse and Java then skip ahead, the timestamp will be in the description. So to get started, first you need Eclipse and the Java development kit. I've hit written a short tutorial on this, you'll find the link in the description as well. Uh, basically you just need to open these two links and download Java, accept license and then well basically just download the version you need for your computer. Uh, same for Eclipse, just download over here, then download blah 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 and there's the download link. I've of course already done this. So open these. With, I do it with 7-zip but you can also do it with WinRAR and probably just with default Windows WinZip thingy. This might take a while. And done. Next you need to install the JDK, well I take it you know how to install stuff, so basically just install it and then you can't run it yet because you need to add the javaw.exe to your path variable. Simply go to your control panel, go to the system, e system. Advanced settings, environment variable, variables, and then find the path. Uh, now first you need to find where you installed Java. It's most likely on your C and then your program files. And then there should be Java. I've got multiple JDKs, ignore that. You should have only one. Just click the latest and then the bin. Copy this, edit this, go to the end of the line, add a semicolon and just paste in the link. Press OK, OK and OK. So now try again, running Eclipse. It will ask you for a workspace, it doesn't really matter right now, just press OK and continue. Then it will load the workspace. And you've installed Eclipse and Java. Now we can continue with the Forge stuff. Um, to get started with Forge you first need something called Gradle. This is a plugin for Eclipse, you can get it in the Eclipse marketplace. Simply search for it here, just type in Gradle, enter. You'll get a couple of results. You need the Gradle integration for Eclipse. There's a little button here, install. You don't need the optional stuff, so you just untag them and confirm. Yes, sure. Accept the license and finish. And now it's installing the software and configuring everything. Do you want to restart Eclipse? We don't want to restart Eclipse, we just want to close Eclipse entirely. So next is getting the Forge files. There's another link over here. Get the Forge files. Um, for now, use the 1.7.2 recommended version. And get the source. We'll just click here. Wait for the Adfly link. And download. Almost download. Wait 
another couple of seconds. No, we download. And just save it somewhere on your computer. Then you'll get this. Create a folder somewhere. I do it on my D, then I've got multiple setups for past versions as well. Then my projects. And this is for us today. Just drag it in. Exit off. So now we need to open a command prompt. The easiest way to open a command prompt is holding the left shift, right clicking, and open command window here. That's the easy way, but there are multiple ways. You can just type cmd over here, then go to your D. Uh, in my case, it's mcp. And hit tap a couple of, couple of times. Do we have the correct folder? There. Hit enter. CD lessons. So, that's the correct folder. Yes. Okay. Now we need a couple of commands. First command is set up the comp workspace and eclipse and then press enter. This process will take a well. while. We'll need to download a lot of things and configure a lot of things. It can well it usually takes like ten to thirty minutes. So I'll just skip forward until it's finished. And we are back. Mine only took three minutes, but that's because mine already downloaded a lot of stuff before when I ran it previously with all my other mods and stuff. Uh, definitely the decompile option. It will appear that it's crashed and take a lot of computer resources. So that one is quite heavy on your computer. Just take note of that. Otherwise you can just exit this off. Oh, mine also gives a couple of warnings but stu and stuff, but you can just basically ignore that. Not really that important. And start your Eclipse again. This time when it asks for a workspace, go to the folder in which you installed it. In my case, that's my D, and then my MCPC 1.7, lesson inside the folder. There should be an Eclipse folder. Click it, press OK, and OK again. And now we've got the Minecraft workspace. Uh, for some it might not have prompted to go to a workspace. You can just go here, switch workspace, other, and then do it that way doesn't really matter which way you do it. Now the funny thing here is that the example mod contains an error. That's totally fine. Let's see, get, what do we have? That's probably like the unlocalized name or something. So fix that. And over here, the green icon. You can select to run the client or the server. If you want the client, just run it. It will put out a lot of text over here. And it will start up Minecraft. Create a world, usually in creative, because, well, you know, it's easier to test things in creative. So create a world loading the spawn area as you see and we installed it completely successfully a little bit of lag there yep seems to work and that's basically how to install forge eclipse and java thank you for watching now there's just a few things left to tell you. Uh, for starters, the reason why we take the recommended version over here is because, well, with every update from Forge, new features get added. 
you can see here in the change log for example in the 1033 icon added the render render hand event so if you were to use that render hand event then everyone needs the latest version because it wasn't in the recommended version yet but because most people use the recommended version because it, well, it's recommended for a reason it's the most stable one and stuff uh, they won't be able to use your mod unless they install the latest so that's why it's usually the smart thing to do to just use the recommended one and then use the new features once the recommended one updates or when minecraft updates and the new forge gets released um let's see what else is there oh when downloading java you'll see multiple windows versions there's the 46 uh, 64 I mean and uh, 32 uh, if you don't know which one to take then you probably want the 32 otherwise you can always check in your system it will say here system type 64 bit operation system another way to check is when you have two program files then it usually means you have a 64 bit computer but if you're unsure, just use the 32-bit. Same for Eclipse. There were also two versions over here. Just take the 32-bit if you're not sure. And let's see. Oh, everything I just said I've also written down. You can find it here. And in my Java getting started. If I went too fast, you can just read it over there instead of constantly pausing the video and doing stuff. And uh, that's about it. One last thing maybe for the more advanced users, Andras. There are more Gradle W commands. Oh, not Gradle. Gradle W tasks. Yes. We just use the let's see set up the comp workspace and eclipse. Let's see where's eclipse? Here's eclipse. But you can also use it for ID and other types of workspaces. But that's mostly for advanced users. If you're a beginner don't even look at it, it'll just confuse you. So, I'll try to do a Forge video every Friday. A new lesson. And this was the video. Have fun modding for Forge. Have a nice day, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.